What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Corner Podcast. Kel Dansby here. Oh man, Andre is hell. Coming to you, fresh week, fresh week of combat sports to talk about. I'm holding it down for this first episode. It's going to be boxing, by the way, spoiler alert, because the old man won't be here later on in the week. It's Canelo week. I thought we were going to have urban loitering. I thought we were chilling all weekend. Thought we were going to be down at the strip, you know, margaritas, a spicy margarita day for you and I, like we usually do. You're going to Bristol. Yep. Got to go to headquarters. Got to go and work out of the studio for UFC 301. Boy, I'm so excited. How times have changed. I feel like we've been doing this podcast for so long that now we're just running like different plot lines, but like sharing them. Because I swear I said that same thing five years ago. And then when we started this, you were still writing for Yahoo. Yeah. Yep. That so was, it's like, yeah, that's right. I was. We're going from like all the companies. We're just rotating all the way around. It's that's how long we've been doing this show. Shit's insane. So now congratulations. That's gonna be cool. Go to J Tim's and shit else worth it near the campus. Gotta get J Tim's wings. And then if you go to Hartford, Parkville Market, it's the place to be. Jamaican spot in there, dope. Great Puerto Rican spot in there too. So go. Yeah, it's I know you've been to Box Park in London by Wembley. Yeah. Yep. They they have all the weigh-ins and shit. It's built just like Box Park with all the restaurants like around and then the bar up top. Yeah, there's a nice brewery. Get a brew. Enjoy that while you are out there. Those are my recommendations. Uh, the pizza is overrated. People love like Connecticut pizza and like New Haven pizza. That shit's whack. Uh, New York's right there. Get a car, get a slice if need be. But that means... Cool, you'll be covering MMA. I'll hold MMA down. Trying to get someone to talk MMA with me. Zeroing in on someone to co-host for that show later on in the week. But that means today it's all boxing because it is still Canelo week here in Vegas. <laughs> You're knee-deep in UFC coverage all week. Yeah. But it's a week where for Canelo, a lot of the questions have been David Benavides, David Benavides, David Benavides. Today... I saw an interview where he was just like, yo, if, he was like, one, who's David Benavidez to offer me anything? And then someone's like, he said he offered you 55 million. And I was like, I fight anyone for 55 million. I barely get out of bed for 55 million. He was like, if a promoter or the Saudi prince wants to come through and offer me 250 million, I'll fight him tomorrow. I feel like Canelo's talking himself into something that he might have to cash in September. If he's victorious here, Against Mungia, I, I think the Saudi Prince might be like 250. And we'll talk about this card the Prince wants to put together for fucking LA. He's not even doing fights in Saudi anymore. It is some weird shit going on right there. I don't know. We could dig into that in the world of boxing. But the Saudi Prince might be like 250. Say less. Uh, I, I just don't like it. Canelo and how he's handled this whole thing. I, I hate it. I've said it a million times on the show. I like stop, like bro, stop talking. If you are gonna fight him, fight him. Don't talk about who, he, who's this, who's that. You're fighting Jaime Munguia. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Like I'm, the fact that I'm missing the fight this weekend, I don't care. I really don't. Like I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I don't feel like even the undercard is like, eh, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's if it was Benavidez, I'd be sick right now. But it, it's not. It's Jaime Munguia. And if it ain't going to be Benavides, which I don't think it will be, which I think what's going to happen is Benavides is going to beat Vozik and then on June 15th, and then he's going to probably challenge for a light heavyweight title. Like, I think he's going to move that quick. That fast? I don't think it's going to be long. No there got to be a, a rematch, right? Like for know. the, I don't know if the Prince does the rematch. In his head, he doesn't because he's always like, no, he yo, the on. winner. Yeah, the winner of... Fury Usyk is going to fight Joshua. Like, he's just moving on. Yeah, he don't care. But I think in three fights, Benavides will be challenging for a light heavyweight title within the next three fights. So the idea that Canelo's talking about, what's he, who he is, is he offering me? Like, I've talked about this all week with, last week with, like, UFC people, you know, about Canelo. It's like, hasn't he earned the right to do what he wants? Sure. Just don't hold the belts hostage. 
That like you you could do whatever you want. Give up the belts. Benavides wants to fight you. He's earned the right to fight you as being the number one, one contender for the, by the WBC. And you just ain't going to fight him. Just say, I don't want to fight him. Here are the belts. Yeah. I mean, the WBC, be the best. WBC now says the number one contender is Edgar Belonga. Right. Exactly. This is my Not point. Not even David Morrell. <laughs> like, this right. is nuts, man. Like, Morrell's about to fight on August 3rd as well. August 3rd? Yeah. yeah. Same card. So, you can't tell me, even though Morrell's only had like 11 professional fights. Sure. I don't care. Yeah. Morrell's already shown that he's a problem. I'd rather Morrell fight Canelo than fucking Edgar Belonga. Yeah, like, who is Belonga beat to be in that position? Nobody. But as, as I keep saying, if Canelo keeps trumpeting that I'm the best, fight the best. You're, you're not, you don't want to be the best anymore. You just want to be paid. His argument is that my resume already states that I'm the best. How many it's times not. do I have to prove it? But it's how long do you have to prove that you are the best? For as long as you fight, if you think you're the best. There's a reason why Floyd was like, I'm just the best ever, right? I'm not the greatest of all time. I'm not fighting everybody. Like, I'm fighting to make the most money. Canelo was like, I want to be the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. When he lost to Bivol, a lot of shit went away. I think he's still the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. Uh, we all have a lot of losses. So it's not like... Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 hard because the reality is, while him becoming the undisputed super, super middleweight champion was great, when you really look at it, compared to other Mexican legends, mm, Caleb Plant was the best person out of that group. Sure. But he cleaned out a division. Like, I'm just in, saying. In a calendar year. It's, but it, it's, it's not like, it was a great run. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is a great run. Canelo's absolutely a top five Mexican fighter of all time. Yeah. But. Top five? Top three? Like, I mean, it, it, him, it's, Julio Cesar Char- Char- Chavez, and Juan Manuel Marquez. Three. I mean, you can go Marquez, you can go Barrera, like, you can go Morales. Barrera's not like, Canelo. Like, he's, Morales is not Canelo. Like, uh, it's those three, and you're, you're arguing around Salvador Sanchez. Like, there's a lot of. And a Canelo lot. says, I'm big me. Ain't no big three. He can say he's big me all he wants. What's his best victory? His best victory ever? Yeah. Gennady Golovkin. And did he, which one? The one where he didn't win or the other one? No, the, didn't win? The, the final one is his best one. The final one with Gennady was 40 years old. I'm just saying. I mean, I know. he may say it's the, well, the first one was a draw. He might, say a draw. It, he might say it was the second one then. Which was his good. second one was his best performance. I scored I it a draw. Won, I still didn't think he won that fight, right? No, I scored it a draw. So if you go down the list of Canelo wins, then what? Right? Canelo beats Gennady Golovkin. Okay. Before that, he, he was oversized to beat Amir Khan. All right. Alfredo Angulo? Uh Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. I mean, while now while Marquez has Pacquiao. He had and he had wars with Pacquiao. But he only he has three losses to Pacquiao. Sure. Benny Pacquiao is one of the allegedly. greatest of all time. Like an yeah. absolute, and he gave him hell in yeah. every Allegedly, he has three losses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's it's really, it's really, like, when Canelo got. Chavez got a lot of cab drivers on that 103, you know, record. He does. Don't get me wrong. You're right. He does. He's the yeah. most beloved Mexican fighter of all time. I think they right? robbed Sweepy in that fight. Too. They did. <laughs> but it's like with Canelo, compared to them, losing the Bival took some luster off the way he lost to Dimitri Bival. Right, because prior to that, it felt like he was on the course. If he would have handily beat Bivol, I probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Because then you would he won another belt in another weight class. Yeah, but he he got handled by Bivol, and he hasn't looked great since. But that's a that was a tall task. No pun intended. Yeah, he picked it. Like it's it's a long way up from where he started. It is. He did pick. He dared to be great, but like that can't knock him. Under some of the other guys, like Juan Manuel Marquez has five losses. Canelo has two, two losses. But Canelo and again, once to Floyd Mayweather. Yes, he lost to the 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 best ever. But it's like again, you go down that list of fighters, and the people he didn't fight, and the time like he fought an undersized Miguel Cotto. He sure, beat Shane Mosley when Shane was over the hill. He beat Those Austin are good Trout. names. Those are good names on rest. Floyd had the same kind of good name, yeah. but he ain't as good as Floyd. No, so we know, we know this. And, and where it stands right now with Canelo's career, 
because he's still young, right? Like, who does he have to be for you to say Benavides? You locked it in, Benavides. That's it. But I'm then, saying, but five years this? from now, if Benavidez's resume don't live up to it, then what? Oh, then no, no, that, no, no. That's no, going to no, look no. like a whack win or a mediocre it look, win. It, it won't look like a whack win because Benavides has been after his ass for how many? I've been saying Benavides' name for how long? At least three, like, four years. Four at years. least. At since, least. Since I'm, he vacated the belt for cocaine. Yeah. Because he I mean, won I, the WBC. He was like 22 years old or something. Yeah. They're like, oh, this fight's going to happen soon. And then he came back. He got it back. You're like. Fight Canelo right now. And somehow he lost it on the scale that one day. Yep. And Canelo just. Yeah, like Canelo got it, but you got it. Canelo, it's not like Canelo's 40 years old, right? Canelo's what, 32? 33? And, and he's got a lot. Granted, he's got a lot of mileage on him as a fighter. He's fought a lot of fights. That being said, it's like when I look at his resume and I try to go, like, aside from Golovkin, which was absolutely the best opponent in his career. Aside from that, John Ryder, like Caleb Plant was probably his best victory. Maybe you could say Billy Joe Saunders. Maybe Billy Joe Saunders so. and the way he did him was dirty. Broke the orbital. Like, look, that that one year Filthy. run was unreal from Canelo. Um, Jacobs in the defense. And the, he looked great against Daniel wow. Jacobs. I just he's absolutely top five Mexican fighter of all time. But if you want to be the best, if you are, it's not like you're forty. Like Floyd, Floyd was damn near forty. Yeah. Like he had at 36, 35, 36, he was like, eh, I don't need to he fight the most. Pacquiao at 37? Yeah. That's a good win at 37. It is. I mean, but this is Floyd we're talking about. Somebody was undefeated. Somebody was clearly like the only close fight he's really ever had was how many years ago? When he fucking tore his rope hit tater cuff. Yeah. He could barely punch. What? Floyd was 27? Right. The, outside of that? Like and he came a, back and beat the brakes off him. Yes, but he's he's Floyd. Like Canelo had questions about his resume up until Golovkin, because he wouldn't fight Golovkin. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like but he, he did, but then he did, and then it was a very close fight, and people were like, all right, we all gave Canelo credit. Fine, he's actually really good. But up until that point, remember, I was the one who said Gennady was going to stop him. Yeah. And they had a war, and it was fantastic. And I thought he lost. Whatever. They had the rematch. Match. I still didn't think Canelo won. But I thought he fought a great fight. Yeah. Then he said, I ain't never fighting you again. I'm going to wait till you get old. And I'm going to you know, go through this 168-pound division. Look great. All this is great. But now that you have the belts, like John Ryder, Jaime Munguia, Edgar Belanga, I'm not, gonna, even, I'm not gonna downplay even. John Ryder, yield him or whatever. Like he had to fight them to become undisputed. He didn't have to fight you, Daryl. He just fought him to stay busy. That wasn't it was for a, nothing. It was a vacating belt. It was for nothing. No, that first belt he won was vacant and he won it in that fight. Not the no, he got that from Count Smith. They fought for the vacant title. It was some had a belt too. Hmm. Okay. He was it was a stay busy fight. All right. I thought that one and Sure, I thought that was the one where he got Yadira the vacant. Yadira didn't have, no, no it was just no. a stay busy fight. Well, and he took that shit like two months after. He took that in like I, a random look, December where he never fights, and he was just like, yo, let me watch no, that. No complaints for me. I had no yeah. complaints. As active as Canelo was, I had no complaints about that. Then he was definitely a mandatory. And Canelo was like, I'm just getting his ass out of here. So, But he loses the Bival, takes a bunch of time off, fights John Ryder, right? Well, yeah. wait, wait, he fought Golovkin too, right? After Bival? Golovkin was after Bival. Okay, Bivol because they announced they had the package ready for Golovkin in the yeah. arena, and then he loses, and it was like, oh shit! And then they end up still doing Golovkin. So then he fights Ryder. Then now he's fighting Mungia. Wait, I'm missing somebody. Who am I missing? I'm fi- missing somebody in this. No, I that's, feel like I am. That's it. Well, because the reason why I'm saying I miss somebody is because it doesn't sound great. <laughs> <laughs> like as I'm saying it. It doesn't sound great. It doesn't sound like this is the best fighter in the world right now. Like, Canelo hasn't... Like, Floyd Mayweather, at the peak of his powers, remained the number one pound-for-pound fighter in the world. You couldn't take it from him. You can argue about who he fought, but he was the best fighter in the world. Canelo believes he's the best fighter in the world, but he ain't fighting the best person in his weight class. He's not interested. And now he's making excuses why he's not going to fight that man. Yeah, that's I, the whole thing, my man. It was Gennady, 
John Ryder, Charlo. Oh, yes. There we go. Here we are. 154 pounds, Jamel Charlo. (laughs) Here we are. The nerve to call David Benavidez a weight bully when you fought a man who jumped up two weight classes. Then you said, when Terrence Crawford wanted to fight you, what will I get out of fighting him? Because it's three weight classes. My man, you just fought Jamel Charlo, who was two weight classes, and we all know Terrence Crawford is going to beat the brakes off of Jamel Charlo. So why didn't you fight him? No? All right. Well, then you fight David Benavidez. He had two routes. And he chose Jaime Munguia. Jaime Munguia, who fought a, a over-the-hill Sergey Derevchenko in a fight of the year candidate. Fantastic fight between Munguia and Derevchenko. Yeah, great. But, but Sergey wasn't, he's not that dude. No. And he, he almost did. got Munguia out of here. He did. This is my point. Then he go, then Munguia beats John Ryder. So what? In my mind, how does this earn you the right to challenge the undisputed champion? Remember, Mungi is 160 pounds. He fought most of his career at 160 pounds. He's not a big dude. No. He's coming to 68. I just I don't like how Canelo's handled this. If you say you're the GOAT, fight the best in your division. You're not, you are the cash cow. You are the biggest star in boxing, I suppose. Right? Yeah. You're, the, you're the breadwinner. You got a whole nation behind you. But man. You said I ain't gonna fight no Mexicans. That Benavidez is gonna come in twenty five pounds heavy. Look, man, you fought Bivol. What the fuck you complaining about? And lost, <laughs> right? Like, but this, like, you wanted to fight Bivol again for the light heavyweight title, but you don't want to fight the guy in your same weight class. I, I don't like this attitude. And again, Mungia is fine. Like, I think this will be a it may be a fun fight because Mungia is just gonna come and throw hands. Mungia doesn't have very good defense. Canelo's probably gonna counter him to hell. Yeah. And it'll be a fun fight to watch. But you can't sell me on this idea like this man deserves the right to fight Canelo over fucking Benavidez. I don't know or who probably. deserves it anymore. You have to do so much to deserve Nobody. it. Nobody. This the, there's one man. Who has beaten up everybody who was the former owner of that title? Who beat it was the number one contender. And you're like, I ain't gonna fight him. I'm gonna fight a guy that's not even ranked. You gotta, you man, you gotta be kidding. So I'm I'm so uninterested in this fight. Then he's gonna fight Edgar Berlanga here and who cares? in Vegas. Maybe because they UFC snatched his date, unless they yes, just they run the, it. They're running the sphere. Yeah, unless Canal just says fuck it. He's been doing that anyway. a lot lately. Like he's been skipping Mexican Independence Day every now and then. Yeah, I mean, he, he could October. He fought in November. He could fight like the week beforehand and just try to get all the Mexicans out here early. I mean, Floyd fought on Mexican holidays more than Canelo did. Yeah, single the Mayo excluded. Single and, is pretty locked in. And here's here's a question, and because as we get closer to fight, as we're in fight week, we get closer to the fight. Oscar's been heating up, right? Oscar's just he's heating up. Oscar's on the victory lap. He thought, he thought, uh, <laughs> fucking that Ryan Garcia was on the victory lap because he's doing hip hop songs in Colorado with YG. No, Oscar's on the victory lap. So, the first question is Oscar De La Hoya a Mexican fighter? Yes. Okay. Has Canelo got a better resume than Oscar? No, he doesn't. Oscar has a lot of losses. Oscar's got a better resume. I'm that, not saying the better record. The not the resume. The last two hurt. Floyd, Manny, Manny beating the shit up. Those hurt. Canelo don't doesn't have those on the resume where no, someone but, just beats him into submission. Canelo no, no, no. does not have that yet. Not yet. Yes, not Canelo's yet. resume. Not yet. And not he's yet. dodging the guy who can do it. You're right. That that is not on his resume. And as long as he dodges Benavidez, I'm not showing sure ugly loss because the Bivol loss was a loss. Yeah, it was just straight up loss. But it wasn't Manny beating the shit out of Oscar De La Hoya. So yes, Canelo's resume is better than Oscar De La Hoya's. I don't know. I and don't Oscar know. fought everyone. Though. I give him props for fighting everyone. But those last two losses are ugly. I mean, the Floyd loss is ugly because he fought Floyd closer than Canelo did. It was like 13. Sure. I mean, Canelo got washed by Floyd. Sure. Like, granted, who was it? CJ Ross was fucking. That was like a 
Yeah, majority decision. Like he got a yes, split. There, there was one, there was a draw, but anybody draw. watched that fight, it was like 11 to 1. Like Floyd washed Canelo that night. He embarrassed him. Now Canelo was a kid. Oscar fought a, a much closer fight. But the only thing I always say about Oscar is he fought everybody when they were in their prime. Like he went after every it's kind of like what Ryan Garcia is trying to do, but Oscar was better. Like Oscar fought everybody. Everybody. He's got a better resume than Canelo. Not a better record. Yeah. He's got a better resume. He's got a better resume. He like just like uh Canelo did, he moved up, failed against Bernard Hawkins. Right? Like and Canelo tried the same with Bivol. But Oscar was winning in what 130 pounds, 135, 140, yeah. 147. Like Oscar was never a weight bully. Oscar fought a fuck a gassed Fernando Vargas, and gas I don't mean tired. I mean juiced out into the gills over the the country of Mexico because ferocious Fernando Vargas was a problem. Ike Corte was a problem. Shane Mosley was a problem. These are people that Canelo might avoid if they were around yeah. right now. So I just at, at this age, Canelo's definitely top five. There's no denying that. But if he wants that top spot, he got to fight the best out there. And that's not what he's doing. And I don't like how he's handling it. He's done it for quite... No one was woofing all this shit before a year and a half ago with David Benavidez. No one was questioning the resume. No one was calling him a duck. No one said he was scared to fight anyone. It's literally one guy. We want to throw the whole fucking resume out the window. No, no, it's not. And rewrite the story of Canelo Alvarez. I gave Canelo... I gave the Canelo the same criticism with Golovkin. I said the same thing when it came to Gennady Golovkin. Why are you waiting to fight him? What's taking so long? Why are you fighting people above and in the middle of his weight class without fighting the man? He had the same issue, and he's doing it again. It's just because he had the great run at 168 pounds following the Golovkin win that we got all excited. But you got to remember the career before and the career after. Career but after before was one hell of a career, Dre. No, it wasn't. Beating Amir Khan? No, he was not even pound for pound until he fought Golovkin. He sent him to hell. Amir Khan was tiny. It wasn't fair. Like he was a Canelo tall was, 147. Yeah, but he wasn't big, no. right? Like Canelo was weight bullying people. Miguel Cotto had to move up to fight him at a catch weight because Miguel Cotto was too small. Yeah. Like Chavez Jr., come on, man. That, who's that? That's like a Mexican story. I get it. I get why. Kirkland? They said I mean, he didn't fight black people. He had to beat up on one. I, all I'm saying is Canelo's resume looks shaky in the light when you compare before and current because he's doing it again. Like you never heard Oscar or Chavez or Morales or Barrera or Marquez say, I ain't fighting that guy. You never heard them say that. They were always no. like, Marquez was like, I'm going to fight anybody. Anybody. They all were. That's that's the one common characteristic of all the Mexican fighters. The Mexican style, like, sure, like some of them had Mexican style, but they all had different styles. The one common denominator was, I want all the smoke. Yes. Just Canelo pay don't me. Want the smoke. Just pay me, and I'm there. Canelo doesn't want the smoke, and that's my problem with Canelo. You claim you're, like, the great Mexican fighter. He's Mexico dodged like one person. Three. It's he not dodged, like he's dodged. Mo- no, man. He, he's, he he's, ended up fighting Golovkin, but and it was, it was like a two year wait, Dre. It wasn't like an eight year wait, like Mayweather Pacquiao. It was a two year wait, right? It was a two year wait. Golovkin was older, and to a lot of us, he lost that fight. Yeah, and then the rematch. To a lot of us, it was no better than his draw, or he lost that fight. He got the decision. When people was like trilogy, because this is way too close. What did Canelo say? Nah, I ain't fighting him. No, I be, I won. What am let, I? Let, what, why is there a trilogy? I won. Let's not forget tainted meat. Like let's let's. I mean, we really got to talk about Canelo's career when we talk about these things. You forgot pop, about the bro. tainted meat. I forgot about the tainted meat. You pop. You popped. Triple D G didn't pop. You popped. The fun. One of the funniest stories, and I don't know if it meant anything. Me and Andre Ward talked about it. He's like, I've been waiting for him to say my name. I'd have fought Canelo in a heartbeat. He wouldn't say my name. I begged him to say my name. Nobody wanted to smoke with Andre Ward. No, because it, it's not a fun fight. You're just going to no. sit there and you're just going to strategically gonna break you. you down. Yeah. yeah, he's just going to beat you. But I just feel like... I wasn't sexy. 
Canelo's career has been a lot of smoke and mirrors when you really break down this resume. Alfredo Angulo, James Kirkland, Amir Khan. Like, aside from Golovkin and Kayla Plant and Billy Joe Saunders and this tremendous run that he went on, it ain't like he spent, like, the last five years beating the best. He's one, two, skipped a few. Yeah. 68 was not a very strong weight class. Callum Smith was a good fighter, too. But then Callum Smith got sent to hell by Artur Betabiev. Everyone does. I know. You, think, that's... you hear Canelo calling for Bival, he ain't calling for Betabiev. No, he went strategically after Bival first because the better BF fight, that's not your first fight moving up to that weight class. It won't be any fight. No, I, that, guy, that guy's an axe murderer. Um, I think he's good. Again, I'm going to leave it at this. We could really like break down the Nessa Bolsa fights, move on to what's next. I think Canelo's a very good fighter. I think he easily dispatches the Mungia. The problem with this fight is it becomes a trap fight because Canelo doesn't look good. Then we're going to really put that resume under a microscope because you handpicked this dude for a reason. He's an all action fighter who gives you all the openings in the world to, to counter and, and give the fans what they want with a blistering knockout. If you can't do that, because the one thing Mungia is going to do, he's going to fight. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to throw a lot of punches. If you can't get rid of this guy, you couldn't get rid of John Ryder. You couldn't get rid of Jamel Charlo, which is crazy because Jamel was scared of shitless. Four straight decisions. You can't get rid of Mungia, who is tailor-made to get knocked out by you. I got questions because you handpicked that man. You picked yeah. Charlo. You picked this one. You picked Ryder. And you, you didn't look spectacular against the other two. You beat Charlo, but Charlo was a shell. Way too small, had no chance. Ryder, you should have got Ryder out of here. You didn't look great. Yeah. This, you have to look fantastic. Otherwise, I don't care. It's made for him to stop him. And I feel like the underlining, like cherry on top is, I'm going to be all Oscars fighters. Like, I got nothing else to do. Fuck don't Oscar let, De La Hoya. Bro, don't let this be a Bring all the fighters. Don't, like... Oh, bro. Oscar's going to treat that shit like a win. Yeah, yes, he should. He's, he's going to call shenanigans. He's going to say that they gifted it to Canelo. He's going to call for a rematch. Oscar's going to spin that shit crazy if it's close. If... You know how bad it has to be that you won't fight Benavides, that you're so unwilling to fight Benavides that you run to your arch nemesis to fight one of his fighters? A man that you said and said would never get paid fighting with you again? Yeah. And Lilo said this. He did. He ran, he ran from Benavides to fight one of Oscar's fighters. That's why Oscar's treating him like this right now. He knows they don't deserve this fight. They're going to take it. Yeah. And he gonna Oscar talk, just going to talk that shit because he like, you need me. Yeah, rightfully so. He's earned that right to talk trash about Canelo. And I can't wait. I can't wait till the press conference. I can't wait. I'm not going to be there. I might actually go to the, the little media happy hour in a couple days. I might. You are? Yeah. Um, my flight's that night, so I'm, I might pop in because, like, the, the email was like, just come through. I was like, I might come through. But that's I what expect, I'm talking about. There goes I, our spicy margarita. I expect Oscar to be spicy. All week, no matter what happens, Oscar's the winner in all this because he went from no champions in a in a, in a promotion that didn't seem like it had anybody to a. He still don't got champions, but yeah, I get you. <laughs> this is the best case scenario. I saw I saw someone Photoshop him on top of Elsa from Frozen, and it just said "Let it snow." After the Garcia and, and uh, Ryan Garcia was the little snowman. It's based on, oh my God, people are great on the internet. Yeah, Oscars, Oscars play with house money and don't, really all Oscar needs is Munguia to catch Canelo. Just, just put him down. Yeah. Even if you lose, just put him down. Show that there's a chink in the arm. That's it. That's it. You're not and supposed to be here. No. Like, go out there, Oscar, let the hands fly. Try to put his ass down. Oscar built Munguia to eventually fight Canelo. And then when Canelo got disappeared, he's like, damn it. He's like, I just got to drag this out as far as I can. And hopefully Canelo will come back around. Fortunately, David Benavides scared the shit out of Canelo and Canelo came running back. Now I, can't, like, I can't believe Berlanga is going to fight Canelo. It's the most ridiculous thing. He signed with the zone and Eddie Hearn was like, I, come here, I'll give you a Canelo fight. Mexico versus Puerto Rico. And it was like, how are you promising this shit? Get the fuck out of here. Then Canelo signs with PBC. It's like, this shit's never happening. He said two years. This shit's going to happen. 
It's nuts, man. It, it's it's nuts. What oh, and know. they don't got to worry about that. Even if it's Mexican Independence Day, it'll be in New York. Yeah. Well, mm. yeah. That was never fought in MSG. It's the Mecca. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Who did he fight? Rocky Fielding. I was there. It was our first fight with the zone. Wow. Well, I'll be there. Oh, it is. He fought. He fought 2018. Him. Yes, I was there. Another one on his resume. It's like, hmm, really? <laughs> All right. You just poking holes and shit. Right. I'm just saying, you go up and look again. You compare Floyd's resume. You can say what you but wanted, but who did he fight that was not earning that opportunity? Was just whack. Not my Don. He earned it. Berto. That's the only one. And that was and like the last. Literally one. a swan song. He was like, "I'm out of here." It's the last one. You get this little homie paid right quick. Aside yeah. from that, my Don twice. Cotto. And my Don only got that because he beat the shit out of Broner. Broner. Yeah. Like Floyd fought everybody that was deserving and it was gone by the time Keith Thurman, everybody showed up. The only, there's only two people that Floyd didn't fight Antonio Margarito. And that was at the end of the top rank deal when Floyd left. And the one person that who was loading every, his gloves. So it doesn't fucking matter. That, and there's one other person that he didn't fight that everybody thought could give him problems. Paul Williams. A lot of people yeah. forgot about Paul Williams. He didn't end up fighting Paul Williams. And then Paul Williams got smashed by Sergio Martinez, but Floyd fought everybody. I would say, and then Spence towards that. But given yeah. what we know now, well, like history rewrites itself. So now people are like, well, Floyd would have beat the shit out of Arrow. I don't know. I don't know either. But I don't know either. I mean, nobody wanted to fight Bud. No, but Spence, Thurman, but Spence- all those guys, the, Floyd was done. Floyd was yeah. done in 2015, 16. Like he I, was- can't, I can't say that same thing when I. On this show, for many years, we were, in the beginning of the show, clamoring for Pacquiao to fight Bud. Yeah, because Pacquiao yo. was still active. Yeah, and it was like, yo, put him in there against Bud. Put him in. You're missing the opportunity. Put him in against Bud. Yes. Why the fuck? Like, he goes to Australia and loses. What stupid shit is that? Should have put him in there against Bud. Should have made your next star. Absolutely right. And then Bud has to go and get the belt back and everything. And it's just like, Bob Arum was too nice to Pacquiao on the way up. Yeah, like Floyd, Floyd was done. Like Floyd was done. Like he made it very clear. I'm done. I beat Pacquiao. Here, we'll go fight Birdo. And then I'll fight Connor and make a lot of money. But he was done. He was checked out. Manny was still trying to be a champion somewhere. Yeah. Like you gotta remember, just like a few years ago, he's trying to fight Errol Spence. I mean, he beat the shit out of Keith Thurman. So I'm saying, like, Manny was active, Floyd wasn't. So Manny legitimately fought everybody. Like that guy fought everybody. Canelo's just not doing that, man. Yeah, how do you see this fight going then? How do you see Cano, it playing out? Cano stops him in round nine. I think okay, when, so Cano's going to handle business. All this hoopla. Yeah. No, it's not that, like, I, this is what should happen. I don't know how much Cano's deteriorated because he hasn't really been tested. And I don't think Mungi is that guy. But this is, not a, this is not a tough fight for Canelo. It's not. He's too skilled. He's too good of a counterpuncher to have to worry about somebody like Mungi. He gets him out of there in, like, nine. If he doesn't, I'm disappointed. Again. Yeah, I think he stops some. I might go a little earlier, like round six, seven. Sure. But I, I think he gets him out of here, and then he definitely stops for Longo whenever they fight. Yeah, that fights. that shit might go three rounds. He he stops for Longo with a body shot. <laughs> yeah. He why he not? He stops with a body shot. Yeah, yeah why not? Because it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh, it can't. It starts for Canelo after that. And Canelo will be 33, 34. And it's like, how do you want this swan song to play out? I don't know. I keep saying it. Like, going back to the Benavides. He's going to belt chase. Like, hey, look, Canelo. The longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. You should have fought Benavides two years ago. And weight-wise, you don't want to fight him at 75. Hell no. Stay the hell. Like, stay away from 175 entirely. Maybe you fight Charles. Like, fight guys coming up. Don't fight guys you have to go up to not at this stage of your career. No, I, I agree. A couple other things to touch on then before we wrap up the show, kudos to you. You know, you're everywhere. Saw you on Jake Paul's page because oh. uh, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul yeah, is sanctioned course. as a legit fight. Yep. Without being, um, you know, to inside baseball, when that came across the desk, came across the email, 
Mm. You like, really? Because as yeah. soon as I saw you tweet it out, how? Um, it's Texas. <laughs> uh, so really, all I can say, like, I broke it. Uh, Monday morning, I had to wait. I knew I had to wait for the commission to formally announce it before I could have got the news out. That's why I had it first. Yeah. Um. Yeah. When I got the news, I was like, wait, what? Cause I had the rules before everybody else too. Right. Like a lot of people had the, uh, that it was sanctioned, but I had the rules, 14 ounce gloves. People you were the only one I saw with the news. Yeah. Well, cause I, I got it. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying like even two days after everyone's crediting you. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I got it. Like I was, <laughs> you know, I was supposed to do the, uh, Pat McAfee show. They talked about it on first take today. Um, yeah, when it came out, it's just like, oh, okay. So here's the thing. It's sanctioned as a pro fight. This is this is nuts. It shouldn't be, right? It now becomes the biggest age gap in professional boxing history at 31 years. All the rules, though, like it's it's the bigger age gap than Archie Moore when he fought <laughs> funny Ted DiBiase's father, the million dollar Ooh. man's father. <laughs> yes. That's who Archie Moore fought in his final fight. Archie Moore was 49 at the time, and DiBiase was 25. So that's a 24-year difference. When Tyson and Paul step in the, the ring, they'll be 31 years apart. Yeah, They'll be a whole, I, a whole human being apart. I thought it would have went to, to Big George, you know? like nah, No, he didn't have that big of an age gap with Michael Moore and any of those guys. Archie Moore was 49. Damn. Mike Tyson will be 58. Jake Paul will be 27. Now, I say that because this is important. When the rules came out, people, like, I, my, my mentions are still nuts over this. People have talked about all these things, like, it's, you know, uh, Jake Paul's going to get killed, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, y'all do realize these rules are actually for Mike Tyson, though. They're not for Jake. They're for Mike. Two-minute rounds favors Mike Tyson. Oh, hands down. 14-ounce gloves, while you may think it favors Jake Paul it favors Mike Tyson because we don't know what Mike's punch resistance is going to be like at 58 years old. Yeah. If there's one thing that Jake can do is he can punch. He, he's he got the puncher's chance almost more than Mike does. But now you got 14 ounce gloves, which means Mike fight has to fight in spurts, mm -hmm. eight rounds in two minutes, two minutes of people are like, well, is that a big difference? Yeah. If you watch women's boxing, it's a huge difference. So Mike's going to have a little bit more energy to fight Jake. But this this is stupid. Like it overall, <laughs> the fact that this has been sanctioned as a pro fight that'll end up on Mike Tyson's record if and when he loses is what I think is gonna happen, is crazy. Because you look at Mike's record, Buster Douglas, Michael Spinks, Trevor Burbick, Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield, Razor Ruddick, Jake Paul. What? <laughs> like and you look at Jake Paul's record 20 years from now. Somebody stupid is gonna but, but he beat Mike Tyson. He beat Mike Tyson. <laughs> he beat UFC champions and Mike Tyson. This is craziness. He's just gonna say the baddest man ever. It's crazy. This this is crazy. I can't believe the fact that they're sanctioning this as a pro fight is it's nuts. It is absolutely nuts. I'm blown away by this. So yeah, when I had the news, I was sitting on it, getting ready to break it. So like, I can't believe this is happening. I kept checking. I was like, y'all sure? Y'all sure? And he was like, yeah, no, this is happening. I got the rules. I was like, all right, okay, here we are. Jake Paul is Mike Tyson, July 20th on Netflix. My God. <laughs> That's what's so funny. Like, you're just looking and you're like, nah, y'all fuck with me, right? Like, wait, don't, don't be ribbing me on my first week on the job. No, <laughs> That's I, what yeah. I would have said. Like, yo, you're going to rib me to put out this news and be like, ha ha. Like, that's some real, like, WWE shit. Yeah, but here we are. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul in a sanctioned pro fight. All right. And the card's not bad. So I don't, like, want to shit on the card. Like, the card is... Shaping up to be pretty good. Dude, you got Serrano versus Taylor as your co-main event. Most, probably the most highly anticipated women's rematch ever. And that's your co-main. Yeah. It, I said it before. I was like, yo, if you want to fill up AT&T Stadium, put some real fights on the card. That's the one. That is the one. Like, they, I was on serious with Dean Thomas, and Dean don't care about no damn boxing. <laughs> was just like, Dean was like, Serrano and Taylor ain't going to help nothing. And I was like, no, it is. They sold out MSG. Yeah, I was like, not only that, Netflix is trying to break these live events, live sporting event streaming records. Like, they're trying to do this. 
So Dean was like, well, nobody's going to tune until the main event. No, they're not. If Taylor and Serrano fight, it don't matter. It's on Netflix. It's on your front page. People, more people go to Netflix than they go to any other thing. You go there and you see Mike Tyson. You're like, ah, I might as well tune in. And you see these two women scrapping. Yeah, they're going to do just fine. I'm not. This is huge. Like, this card is huge. It's a massive spectacle. As much as I don't want to see Mike Tyson get hurt, and I don't want to, I think this shouldn't be a pro, a pro boxing match. This is a huge card, which I'll more than likely be at. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm thinking about going to it. Maybe. I got the all, like, clear on it, but I'm just like, it's going to be a circus. I don't know it's, what I'm going to get being yeah. there that I can't do from home. And I have... Uh, tickets to a live podcast that thursday in arizona yeah i'm gonna go watch shits and gigs shout out to, to shits and gigs great pod they're touring the u.s it's like their first u.s tour and i was like fuck it i gotta buy these tickets so either i'm flying from there to dallas for this fight or i'm just bringing my ass home and watching it it it's one of those things because elena was like why would you miss that because i've gone to like a ton of other fights i was like because I still don't believe this is a real fight. Yeah, wow. And when I look at it, and you're like, I could probably go to that fight. But budget's all the same. I think I want to go to LA for the fight card on August 3rd. Now there's reports that they want to add Wilder versus big baby Jared Anderson. Which I'm like, top ranks, let them know fight Wilder? I don't care what Wilders look like. Oh, what's happening? Jared <laughs> Anderson is young. He's still getting his sea legs, and he's been hit a lot. Wildly talented, but you don't want to get hit by that guy. No. I, and he's a two-to-one underdog to Big Bang Zhang, so the shit may not happen. But Jared Anderson has a better shot against Zhang than he does Deontay Wilder. He does. Like, this August 3rd card is, is out of control now because Matrimov and Crawford, obviously, as Crawford goes after an undisputed in a third-way class. But then you – like – we just added Virgil Ortiz and Tim Zhu. Like, what, what Virgil Ortiz did to Thomas DeLorme on Saturday, I didn't even get a chance to watch it. It was a blink. I watched the whole shit on Twitter. Like, I, I was, what was I doing? Oh, I was at UFC Fight Night. Yeah. And I was at the Apex. This is my first Apex show, by the way. I'd never been to the Apex for a fight night. How is it? It's weird. It's not Eerily like, quiet? Yeah, you can literally hear everything. And there's like a small group of fans that paid way too much money to sit in there. So they're going crazy. But I was like, I was watching and I was like, all right, I'm going to drive home because he hadn't, Virgil hadn't walked to the ring yet. Yeah. Alex, Alex Perez got the knockout over Nicolo and I was like, I'm going home. As soon as I walked through the door, Virgil Ortiz's hands are in the air. And I'm like, wait a second, the bell just rang. That's all it took. <laughs> one body shot. One body shot. Um, and now he's fighting Tim Zoo. And I'm just like. Poor Tim Zoo. Yeah. Look, I said it before. I like Tim Zoo a lot. Virgil Ortiz is different. I've been telling you all that for the day that I saw. I was like, he's different. He he has a different kind of power. It's not a he doesn't have a David Benavidez bludgeoning power. He's got one hitter quitter power. Yeah. And dude, he sank Delorme. Not like Delorme ever had a chance to beat him, but Delorme couldn't even get out of the starter position. He got he got cracked. And this is what Virgil does. And it doesn't ever look like Virgil's trying to knock you out. He just kind of does. Yeah. Tim Zhu is going to be in it for a hell of a fight. He's this Tim Zhu, I think, is going to lose. I truly do think Tim Zhu is going to lose. Yeah. Uh, the Fandora fight, I don't hold that against Tim Zhu. No, I don't either. It was late notice, guy six foot fucking six, and yeah. he so happened to catch you with a, a elbow to the do, top man. of the dome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like just full, just fucking roads rolling it up bionic elbow to the top of the cranium and split you open fight was never the same no um so if that heals again that happened a month ago four months for a cut it's a pretty quick turnaround yeah i mean look man tim zoo all the credit in the world man wants to fight everybody or <laughs> poor him he should have been fighting jamel charlo for undisputed that's that's what should have happened yeah and sucks. then canelo fucked it all up well, yeah. Well, Jamel yes. messed it up too. Like it, Jamel's brother messed it up. Jamal, Jamal messed it up. Yeah. But Jamel got hurt, and that fight didn't happen. And this, this is where we're at now. But just Virgil Ortiz is a different kind of animal. He's, he's different. And it's at fifty four, hell of a fight. I man, I just don't know. But the rest of this card, I mean, Isak Cruz is on the card. 
It, and it, it sucks that I may not be there because it's the same night as SummerSlam. Oh, are you trying to go to Summer? I may have to go to SummerSlam. No, I may have to go to SummerSlam. Yeah, because, I may have to go to SummerSlam. You know, Coppinger is <laughs> our main boxing guy, so Coppinger will absolutely be at that fight. Now, yeah. could he use help? Sure. But somebody's got to cover SummerSlam. That somebody's yeah. going to be me. So yeah, that makes sense. Like, I'll, I, I'm not going to be able to watch it at all because SummerSlam, SummerSlam, but... I think I have to cover SummerSlam as well. So maybe I won't even be in L.A. for that. I was just banking on being in L.A. I might have to be in SummerSlam. Worst case, me, you, and E are going to find a TV somewhere. I don't care. Sneak me back into Gorilla. Sneak me to catering. We'll find a TV, and we'll watch this together. Because nah, E's not missing that fight. Yes, he is. You don't know. You don't know E. <laughs> e will go to sleep on anything. I was about to say E won't stay up for many things. He won't stay up for that. For fight. Terrence Crawford, he won't. Nope. I've seen him at the fight. Man was, was cr- man was crouched like this, but he was there on a crate. If you allow if you allow him to go home, <laughs> he's going to sleep. Oh like, no! I was, I was hoping he'd be in the arena with us. Not, no, no, you can't no, just no. easily knock out. No, he'll leave. Dark. <laughs> he'll leave. I, I, he's a flight he, risk. <laughs> he he ain't watching. Like he just he's going to sleep. He'll watch the fight in the morning. As soon as he wakes up at in three you. in the morning, he'll be, <laughs> yep, he'll watch the fight. But live, that's the one human being that I know just does not care. He's like, oh, I want to watch this fight. I'm going to sleep. I'll watch it in the morning. He has no FOMO whatsoever on his own on his own. Time. But I also feel like he's not going to get any spoilers. Like he doesn't have to he be on care. social. He'll get a spoiler. And he won't care. He's the total opposite of me when it comes to that. I will mute everything. He'll turn everything on. <laughs> That's how he decides if he's going to watch the fight or he's going to just watch highlights. That's how he operates. Really <laughs> uh, guy. Uh, last thing then to talk about what and, you know, just again, looking forward and for rumor's sake, there's so many fights being booked out. What's the chance now that we're we're kind of coming into the summer months that we get the Charlo versus plant fight and that same card with, well, it was a rumor card with that is the co-main to Javante. Um, no inside information, uh, breaking shit, but it seems like, you know, just the internet's clamoring for it. It's just, I've heard people ramping up like, yo, we are the, I think original fight date was supposed to be Juneteenth, like your wife's birthday. Like, yo, we're seven weeks away. No announcement. Yeah, it ain't happening. Juneteenth. They ain't going to let Jamal, Jamal Charlo get beat up by Caleb Plant on Juneteenth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just keeping it solid. That, that ain't happening. They ain't going to let... Look, and I love Caleb. Like, I, I know Caleb. I think Caleb's a great guy. But you ain't having that white boy beat up Jamal Charlo, Jamal Charlo on Juneteenth. That ain't happening. That's... Um, I know how bad Caleb wants that fight. He's been wanting that fight. I don't know if Jamal wants to fight. At all. Not Caleb, period. I think the, the, the Charlo brothers are, they got a lot of money. Yeah. I think, you know, they're not really friendly with each other, but I think they're both of a similar mentality. It's like, we cashed out. Like, I'm going to have to take less to fight Caleb Plant. And I don't even think the idea of them getting up for that fight is realistic to me. Like, mm. Jamel got beat up by Canelo. There's going to be nothing bigger than that for Jamel. So the I like maybe he could try to get up for Crawford. I disagree. Yeah, because I, I think now that the Saudi bag is always a carrot to be dangled, you're always a Saudi bag away where you could be like, maybe I made enough money, but if I drop this number on the prince and he says, yo, that's light work. I'm like, yo, 20 mil. I'll fight Crawford. Only 20? Here. He just gave two people 25 guaranteed each. Yo, here, hold this, hold this 20. Then you'll be like, I got to get up for this. I, I still don't think you get up for that fight because you don't get up for a fight till training camp, right? That's when you figure out if you want to fight or not. Yeah. And I, I feel like these two have so much money, like they're not going to want to go through the rigors of training camp. And I don't think Caleb Plant is enough motivation to get Jamal Charlo to really fight him, even though he should. I just don't believe that either Charlo brother really wants to fight anymore. Like if you did a card with Caleb Plant and Jamal Charlo and Jamal Charlo versus Terrence Crawford, both of them brothers going home with L's. Both of them. Like terrible L's. Caleb's going to beat the hell out of Jamal. 
and Terrence is going to beat the br- like this is going to be life altering ass whoopings. <laughs> it'd be uh, it'd be them retiring in the ring and hugging. Yeah, yeah, like but don't do it on Juneteenth. Like I can't, my <laughs> blackness can't handle it. it. Can't handle this too much. <laughs> Caleb would be like, listen, I I ain't want to do it. Don't don't put that on me. <laughs> I ain't a killer, but don't push me. But yeah. like that's that's Caleb. Caleb was, he smacked him because he was like, stop pushing me. Stop stroking my beard. That's why Fuck. I smacked. I forgot Caleb smacked. You gotta fight this man. The fact that the man's not saying nothing tells you everything you need to know. If you got smacked, how long would you stay silent? No, there is no staying silent. I'm talking shit until we run into each other again. Yeah. We'll Every day. It. You're not calling if you smack me. Theoretically, and I'm Charlo. A guy smacks me, he is not calling me out. No. I've returned to the ring. I've won. I'm calling him out until he signs the papers. You smacked me. We gotta we gotta shoot the we gotta shoot the five. You but you smacked me and everybody saw it. You smacked me so hard that my baby mama fought my twin brother's baby mama at the same event. Yeah, because because really- they couldn't believe it, and they were thrown into a tizzy. I mean, yeah. The, the other issue is the other like worst kept secret is Jamal's got alcohol issues. So it's like there's sure. there's a, there's a lot, man. Going into him wanting to fight Caleb, Caleb ain't got those issues. Caleb still wants to smoke. Like Caleb lost. And Caleb was just waiting for that fight because Caleb, Caleb could lost- have other fights. Yeah, Caleb lost to Benavides and Canelo. There ain't no shame in that. Ain't no shame in that. I don't think anybody else beats Caleb Plant at 68. Morel. It's a good fight. Morel. I it would test Morel. I'm not a 100 percent believer in Morel just yet. I think he's really good. But okay. j- what I say about everybody, I need you to get hit in the p- face one good time. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm waiting for. The reason why I say Caleb's a dog, because he got hit in the face a lot by David Benavidez. Yeah. You know who Caleb beats? Mungia. Fuck, man, he beats a break. You know, he Caleb, beat Berlanga. He like beats Caleb. Berlanga. This is my thing. Caleb is really good. Yeah. That's always been my thing with Caleb. And yeah, he sent Darrell to the gods, but he's never been known as a power puncher. But if you put the right opponent in front of him that leaves themselves wide open, he's going to knock them out. Yep. He is a perfect example of somebody that Caleb would just square up on and knock out. But Jamal knows that. He don't really yeah. want this man. Now we'll see. Hopefully by the time you get back next week and we get back into our flow, hopefully we get an announcement. Either them or Tank or something. Something's got to give. What is well, the Tank big fight fine. in June? Tank and Frank Martin is June fifteenth. This happened. Oh, June so 15th. they just didn't add this to the card? No, it's, it's Tank and, and uh, who's the coming? Uh, oh my God, uh, Benavides and Vosdick. Oh, MGM Grand. You're right. So we in the building for that one. You are yeah. right. Yeah, no, they're not fighting on June no. Then I don't know when he gets his ass whooped. I don't know. I don't know. Everything's kind of booked up. You can wait till September to take this ass whooping. I don't know. The longer he waits, the worse the ass whooping's going to be. So yes. we'll see when those two end up fighting. Dre, enjoy your trip to New York. Everyone, if you guys don't know, head over to the Patreon. We are talking that talk. We, we didn't mention it this whole damn time, but the biggest ass whooping I saw this week was Kendrick to Drake. Wow. Kendrick and Drake was the biggest ass when we saw and we just talked about a first round body punch knockout and that's like nah, I'd rather take that punch than get a verse from Kendrick right now so we're talking about that on Patreon shout out to everyone who just ran to Patreon to subscribe just because they knew we were talking about it. got like oh, yeah. three new subscribers already didn't even drop the fucking show so thank you everyone make sure you guys check that out make this short and sweet myself with old man Andreas Hell till next time 